This tutorial explains how RGB spec maps work, and shows how to apply spec map effects to your car paints. Note, RGB spec maps are specific to Affinity Photo and GIMP users. Photoshop uses standard grayscale spec maps with layer mode normal. This tutorial is for beginners and assumes viewers fully understand the previous topics listed in the description, with tutorial links. Let's start by covering some fundamentals. 1. Pixels, Bytes and Bits iRacing Car Paint and Spec Map files contain 2048 by 2048 pixels. The color of each pixel is defined by 3 bytes. 1 byte each for the red, green and blue values. 3 times 2048 times 2048 equals 12,582,912 bytes which is 12 megabytes, uncompressed. A byte contains 8 bits. 3 times 8 equals 24 which is why most TGA files are said to be 24-bit. Some iRacing cars use an alpha channel. In this case another byte is used for the alpha channel value. 4 times 8 equals 32 which is why these TGA files are said to be 32-bit. 4 times 2048 times 2048 is 16,777,216 bytes which is 16 megabytes, uncompressed. That's the bit density and math behind our paint and spec map files. 2. Layer and Mode Concepts Painting programs generally facilitate painting using multiple layers. Our painting layers are similar to a multi-layer wedding cake. This makes it possible to alter each layer and effect individually. Here we have a green shape. The next higher layer is a red shape. Because the layer with the red shape is higher it overrides the layers below, but only in the areas where the red layer is not transparent. That is the default mode, but it is not the only layer mode available. Let's change to a top-down view of our shapes. At the bottom we have our blue background. Think of that as the eye racing blue layer, which is not actually used by the eye racing graphics engine. The next higher layer is a green square. Think of that as the eye racing green roughness layer. The next higher layer is a red circle. Think of that as the eye racing red metallic layer. These layers are all using the normal layer mode, which is basically an override mode. The green has overridden the blue. The red has overridden the green and blue. But only in the areas where each layer is not transparent. The blue areas reach the TGA files as red 0, green 0 and blue 255. The green areas reach the TGA files as red 0, green 255 and blue 0. The red areas reach the TGA files as red 255, green 0 and blue 0. As you can see, using the default layer mode, we can only have red or green or blue in any single pixel location. That's not, repeat not, how RGB spec maps need to work. This is a very important concept to understand. Within a spec map, we want the ability to define both the metallic and roughness for each pixel. We use the red layer to define the metallic specular effect at each pixel location. We use the green layer to define the roughness specular effect at each pixel location. We then add the red and green and blue channels together. The output result contains red, green and blue values for each pixel location. To demonstrate that, we will now change the layer modes to add. Setting the green layer to add mode makes it look teal. That's the color you get when you mix green and blue. But within each pixel, the green and blue values are separate. The green area will be output to the TGA file as red 0, green 255 and blue 255. Setting the red layer to add mode makes it look white. That's the color you get when you mix red, green and blue. But within each pixel, the red, green and blue values are separate. The red area will be output to the TGA file as red 255, green 255 and blue 255. The visible colors will vary depending on each color intensity value, and the overlap of red metallic and green roughness. 
we define metallic and roughness separately because it provides direct and simple control over each effect. We can change the red metallic effect in a region without having to consider the roughness effect. We can change the green roughness effect in a region without having to consider the metallic effect. There are drawbacks to this method. Due to the additive layer mode, you can't override lower layers, you have to edit both layers. For the areas where we want to apply specular effects, we will often have to do it twice, once within the red metallic layer and once within the green roughness layer. However, we can apply layers above the red and green layers that override both. This was demonstrated in the roughness video where we applied a fabric driver surround to a single seater car. Putting the roughness definition above the red and green layers, using layer mode normal, overrode the metallic and the roughness effects, which gave us complete control over the fabric area. The fabric surround areas were output as red 0, green 255 and blue 255. We wanted that area to have no metallic and full roughness to appear as soft fabric. Let's apply some specular effects to our Ford Legends car. We have the car template open in Affinity Photo. This is how the car renders using the standard iRacing spec map. Note, the spec map has been converted to an RGB spec map. How to do that is covered in another video. Refer to the links in the description. Let's make the green fenders very rough. This is very straightforward as we are only dealing with one specular effect. Make a copy of the layer group containing those parts. Drag it up into the green roughness group within the RGB spec map. Now we apply a color override of red 0, green 255 and blue 0. After exporting the spec map and rendering the car in the car viewer, the green areas are now rough. Now we will make the blue body parts metallic. Again we are only dealing with one specular effect. Create a selection of the body parts. Create a pixel layer within the red metallic group inside the RGB spec map. Ensure the pixel layer is selected. Select the bucket flood fill tool. Our body selection will restrict the flood fill to the selection. Select color red 200, green 0 and blue 0. Click anywhere within the body selection to flood the selection with our red specular effect. After exporting the spec map and rendering the car in the car viewer, the blue body areas are now metallic. But there is a problem, the metallic effect is being applied to our decals. This makes the white somewhat gray and generally alters the appearance of the decals to something that is not ideal. The question is, how do we deal with this issue? There are three common techniques to address this problem. I'm going to demonstrate all three, to give you multiple options when working on your own paints. Method 1, delete the decal areas from our red metallic layer. Select the decal areas. In Affinity Photo simply control click the decal layer. Now select the red metallic body layer in the RGB spec map. Press delete to remove the current selected area from this layer. The decals have been cut out. The red and green values from lower layers will be used in the decal areas. Method 2, mask the red metallic layer to eliminate the decal areas. Again select the decal areas. But for the body mask, we want the body area selected, except the decal areas. To achieve that, we need to invert our pixel selection via the select menu or use Control shift i Now select the red metallic body layer in the RGB spec map. Click on the mask function to mask that layer using the current selection. Again the decals have been cut out. Method 3, put the decals above the red and green layers as an override. Make a copy of the decal layer. Drag it into the RGB spec map above the red metallic layer. Our layer mode is normal so the non-transparent content within the decal layer will override the red and green and blue layers. Apply a color override to our decal layer in the spec map. Use red 0 because we don't want any metallic effect. Use green 16 to get a natural surface finish. 
use blue 255 which is the default blue value for eye racing spec maps. We now see the decals being treated differently to the metallic body area. After exporting and rendering the car in the car viewer, our decals look clean, crisp and normal. All three methods give the same result. Let's cycle through our rendered images to highlight the differences. Finally we will work with both metallic and roughness on the same part. Within the paint layer I've created a gold sparkling star on the boot. To get a good result, I want some metallic but not a lot, and more roughness than normal. If we didn't have other specular effects in this area we could put a copy of the star, into both the red metallic and green roughness RGB spec map layers and define each specular effect separately. This situation is a little more complex due to the body red metallic layer, and the additive RGB spec map layers. Let's demonstrate why this is somewhat tricky. Make a copy of the star. Apply a color override of red 128, green 48 and blue 255. Now drag it into the red metallic group within the RGB spec map. We will place it below the body layer, note the resulting color. Now drag the star above the body layer, note the resulting color has changed. Now drag the star above the red metallic group, note the resulting color has changed again. This is actually the result I am looking for. And here is the rendered result. The different colors depending on the layer location shows the additive layer mode behavior. When using additive layers, you are not only adding red and green channels together, the values of each channel are also being added together. If you had two overlapping red parts layers, both with a red value of 100, they would add together giving a final output value of red 200, which may not be what you want. This shows why it's important to understand how your paint program works, and how layer modes behave. Without this understanding people often resort to deleting the eye racing spec map and replacing it with individual parts layers defining both red and green on each layer. That approach does work but it has disadvantages when you alter the car paint, you often have to rebuild the spec map. Using the power of your paint program can make this process easier. I've made numerous spec map videos, each covering a specific aspect of spec maps. People often find it hard to get their head around spec maps. Watch all the videos and most importantly, experiment with spec maps, trial and error teaches you a lot. I hope you now have a better understanding of RGB spec maps and are able to effectively use RGB spec maps within your own paints.